So I find Kendrick Bourne to be a very interesting player. So he got signed by the Patriots very early on in free agency, and he kind of went under the radar a little bit. You know, a lot of the other signings the Patriots made, of course, were a lot bigger and a lot more notable. So of course I get it. But I do think that he is a very interesting player and could do a lot of good in this New England offense who just as badly as they needed like a true number one guy, they just needed guys. And he can be a great number two or number three guy. Like, let's start off with this play. What's going to end up happening on this one is I find it very interesting. It's a cover two man and you see his route. It's going to the outside. And what I like about this play and the reason I find it interesting, not really this play particular, but just the way that he runs this route uh, is the beginning of his routes often start the very same. He does not want to create contact at the line. That's just not what he does. He trusts his speed. He trusts his ability to cut. Uh, doesn't necessarily trust his ability to just, you know, get cleanly off the line. Doesn't feel like he's quite Devontae Adams out there, which is fine. He's just going to try and avoid the contact altogether. Watch once his play starts, he immediately just gets to the side. So at this point, if you want to create contact, you probably, if you're pushing him, that might just be pushing yourself back. It's not really going to help much. It's probably, if anything, it's going to just create more separation. The other issue, of course, is that if you grab on, it'll be holding. And he's about at a one, one yard past the line of scrimmage now anyways, which means that you can't really make much contact or it's going to be a penalty. So he just completely right away took away the ability to create contact and, you know, press him, which is key. I mean, right off the bat, he's now, you know, put himself in a position to succeed, which is very important. He then is able to finish this route, cuts to the outside, gets open, and makes a grab. So that's kind of just what he does. And he's very good, I would say, at beating number two and number three corners. I'm not sure if I would trust him to beat a number one corner, but that's fine. You didn't sign him to do that. It's a three-year, $15 million deal. You don't pay someone $5 million a year to beat uh, number one corners. You pay him that much to beat number three corners, and he can do that all day. Another weird thing that I just have noticed watching tape of his that I feel like I have to bring up is it seems like every single time he makes a catch against his own coverage, he gets the most amount of yards possible without breaking tackles. Uh, what I mean is a play like this, it's going to be zone coverage. His route is the one I've circled in white. It's going to be kind of underneath the coverage a little bit. This is just a, a quick catch, try to pick up some yards here. It's not the craziest play you'll ever see, but on a second down and 15, you would really like to make this, you know, as close to a third down and short as possible. So right when this play starts, you notice that the beginning of it works as expected. It's a catch, you gain a few yards, but you know, if you look at Bourne, he's still 10 yards away from the first down marker. So yes, good job, you got some yards, but again, the more yards you can pick up, the better. And every time in zone coverage, there's a little bubble, right? Because of course, you have to have one player on one side and another player sort of on the other, and Bourne's in the middle. That's kind of how it, it's going to be typically in these situations. And it seems like he always does the best job possible of going right in between those two guys. Watch how he just is able to, you know, turn his shoulder, run forward, and he got very close to the first down. He didn't get it, but he got very close. And that's a, a key play. It's not anything crazy, but he just has that uncanny ability to, every time he makes a catch against zone coverage, you know, get nine yards instead of the four that someone else would have got, which is huge in certain situations. I mean, that can be really key. Again, I would never show this one play in isolation if I didn't see it like a hundred times. It's just one of those weird things that if you start watching tape of Bourne, you will absolutely notice. I now want to talk about the stem portion of his route. It reminds me a little bit of Julian Edelman in a way, where I feel like Edelman's one of the best at this. But really what I mean is he doesn't give too much away at the beginning of his route. And what he also does is he just cuts very smoothly. On this play, it's going to be a route where he's running over the middle against the zone. And what's also interesting is that, you know, I told you, he doesn't like to have contact at the line. And one way he's going to avoid doing that is actually by going to the inside, which typically, if you cut that way, it can be very clear what kind of route you're running, obviously, because you're already in that direction. But once this play starts, I think he does a good job of sort of, while he does run closer to the middle, he's still, you know, Keeping the option open, it seems, that he could be running deep or even running an out route. So, yes, it does kind of look like from this play that, like, okay, not the best uh, stem portion of his route. And I actually admit this isn't his best one. I'm really showing this play more for his cut. But it's still pretty good. And also, just watch the cut he's going to do here. I mean, so seamlessly just goes over the middle, changes direction perfectly, and gets a first down there. Again, I'm not talking about him being, when I say Edelman-like, I don't mean he's actually Julian Edelman. Just there's little small things that you will see there. And now I got to show this play, because this play could actually help give con 
uh, context to what I meant by the stem on his last play, where what's going to happen on this one is, you know, running an out route against man coverage, right? So typically, what would you think he would do? I mean, we just saw the last time when he avoids the contact and makes that first step, he did it to the side of the field that he was going to eventually cut towards. But this time, he's not doing that. Watch him cut to the inside to create this, uh, you know, get past the first, you know, first yard where now contact can't be made. And honestly, that's what a good stem is. A good stem in a route isn't necessarily doing the same thing every time. That's a great way to do it, but it doesn't have to be that way. All you need to do is not give away what you're doing. I mean, have you ever played poker just like with some friends, not like in a serious thing, and someone says, I have a great hand, everyone should fold. You never really know, okay, are they just you know lying to me or are they telling the truth, even though it probably would be pretty easy to tell if you're like an experienced poker player or if they did this a lot. But the fact that it's the first time you've ever seen it, you still can't really be sure. It's similar in this, where obviously, if you just have a blank poker face or run a traditional stem, you know, boring right up the middle stem every single route, well, then yeah, your opposing defense is going to struggle. But also, if you just mix things up constantly, the opposing defense can't really read what it is either. And again, watch just cut to the outside. Really good work by Bourne to get the first down. That's just a really good play by him. Uh, and, you know, it, it was, a, again, he can cut very well, which is something that I do think Bill Belichick really likes and really values in wide receivers. One last play, he can run routes. Uh, again, he's not Amari Cooper out there. He's not Chris Godwin out there, but he can run routes. He's pretty good at it. Uh, this is a good example. It's a cover three zone. He's going to be running an out route. So, again, kind of a similar thing to the last one. Keep in mind, though, the real guy to, for him to beat will be the cornerback who's, you know, quote unquote, in charge of covering the top right hand corner of the screen. But he's going to come in if he sees that Bourne, the only wide receiver in that area, starts cutting, then he's going to come in because, you know, he doesn't really have anything else to cover deep over there. So, you know, get closer in and cover Bourne. Watch. Once this play starts, you notice how he's uh, really, I think Bourne does an incredible job of kind of faking as though he's running a little bit closer to the middle of the field, a little bit further deep, but nothing too drastic. Because if he makes this too obvious, well, then maybe you'll know something's up. But he does a good job, I think, of just this subtle movement to kind of fool the defensive back into staying deep. So when Bourne does cut to the outside, he gets wide open, and that wasn't even the best throw, but he's, you know, he was so open, it didn't matter. So again, he does a lot of little things right. He's not a superstar. He just, he just doesn't have necessarily the pure talent to be like a true number one, I don't think. But he is someone who can definitely be like one of three guys that can start every, you know, series and do a very good job. So yeah, I like the move a lot. I think this is really good value as well. Only 5 million. I think he probably deserves more than that. I could easily see him with the right coaching and in the right system for him uh, do even better and, you know, get a bunch more yards than we're used to him seeing because, you know, not a huge statistical guy. Uh, obviously, he was in a good situation in San Francisco, but, you know, they had Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, so not a ton of opportunities for him. And also, I just think that, honestly, the New England system probably just fits him better, I would say. So, yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.